And we're back here, part two. All right. It says uh, we we did the plus, we did the minus on the two. That was this one right here. Okay. So let's evaluate two limits, which we've already sort of done. But this is more of uh, getting in the habit of writing the expression. So if I do the limit of g of x as x approaches 3 from the right. So if I'm approaching 3, here's my x value of 3 right here. Okay, this part of the graph. And I'm approaching that from the right. Which section am I on? Am I on Benny's section or Bertha's section? I'm on Benny's section. So I'm approaching 3 from the right. Where do I think I'm going? What y value do I think I'm going to? I think I'm going to 3. Am I really going to reach it? Does it matter? This is where I think I'm going. What about the limit of g of x as x approaches 3 whoops, from the left? So now I'm on the left section of that. I'm over here on Bertha's side. I'm still approaching 3 Okay, from this curve. What y value am I going to? I'm going to 1. So just some practice writing that. There is a math notes box there. You want to jot down some uh, highlights from that to help you remember this process. 5-44, sketch the graph f of x. We'll do some erasing here real quick. To get ready for 44, if you need to push pause to sketch that graph, now will be the time to do that. Because you will need a copy of that in your notes. Okay, 5-44. Forty-four, and we're talking about two over x minus four minus one. So f of x equals two over x minus four minus one. First step is to sketch that graph. So hopefully we know what those shifts are. We're talking about a right four. We're talking about a down one. Okay. Remember, right four is going to set my uh, va one, two, three, four. Down one is going to set my HA. Stretch of two, eh, it's kind of hard to sketch a, a stretch like that. So your general hyperbola is still sufficient. So there's my sketch. Now we want to answer some limit statements based on this sketch. Okay, so let me go ahead and write those statements. They're A, B, and C in your book. We're talking about the limit of f of x as x goes to infinity. Then we're talking about the limit as x goes to 4 from the left. And we're talking about the limit as x goes to 4 from the right. And again, that left and right is important. Okay, which one do you want to start with? Let's start with infinity. As x goes to infinity. Where does x equal infinity at? All the way over there as far to the right as possible. Okay, so which part of the curve am I going to be on if I'm talking about going to the right? There's only one part that goes to the right, this part right here. So if I'm on this section of the curve and I'm going to the right, x is going to infinity. What is y going to? What y value am I approaching? Am I ever going to reach it? doesn't really matter if I'm going to reach it or not. What y value am I approaching? Where do I think I'm going? I think I'm going to the y value of negative 1. Okay, now I'm going to approach the x value of 4. Here's 4, that's my VA. If I'm approaching 4 from the left, which side's left? This side's left. So I'm on this section. So as I get closer to the asymptote on this curve, where is y going to? Remember, limits are always y values. y is going to what? y is going to negative infinity. As you're approaching 4, still approaching 4, but now from the right. So now I'm coming to 4 from the right. I'm moving along the curve this direction. As I move along the curve this direction, getting closer to 4, where is my y value going? It's going to positive infinity. And look, a small tip from Mr. Warner is to use your fingers, use your pencil here, and trace the line. Okay, once you have the sketch done, put your pencil on the line. Start going towards 4, bup, 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 like you're taking steps on the line. 
Where are you going? What Y value is your pencil going to? Is your pencil point going to? Or is your finger going to as you trace it? That's going to help you solve these types of problems. Okay? Next, 5-45. So what happens when we don't have a graph? Can we still solve some limit problems? And the answer is absolutely. Okay, so let's take a look at letter A. Letter A says the limit as x goes to infinity of 3 over x cubed. Now this is going to go back to section 1, direct and inverse variation. Okay, so here this is an example of what type of variation? Inverse. So if I plug a really big number in for x, what happens to y? If it's inversely proportional, y gets really small. So by small, we mean 0. So the limit there is 0. Because infinity is the biggest number you can plug in for x. Okay? So anything over big equals small. Okay? So here we have something over big, 3 over big, 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 as big as it gets. If it's inversely proportional, it's going to equal something small. The smallest thing we have is 0. Part B, the limit. And this is all conceptual stuff here. There's no really math knowledge, all right, besides being able to make an association like that. The limit of 5x to the fourth as x goes to infinity. Is this inverse or direct? It's direct. So as x gets bigger, y also gets bigger. So if x is going to go to infinity, which is the biggest it can be, what's going to happen to the y? It's also going to go to infinity. Okay. If it's direct, big and big make big. Letter C and letter D, you go ahead and try them right now. Go ahead and try C and D. So hopefully for letter C, if you plug a really big number in, it's inversely, so something over big equals small, so it's going to equal zero. And letter D is actually going to be, uh, does not exist. We'll talk more about that, more about Y later. But as X goes to infinity for sine, what happens in a sine curve? Sine curve just keeps repeating itself over and over and over again. So is it ever actually approaching a particular place or a particular Y value? No. It's bouncing back and forth between one and negative one and all the numbers in between. So it doesn't actually ever approach one particular place. And last we have number 46. I'm going to keep my graph here because I'm going to need it. So keep that coordinate plane. Go ahead and give yourself a sketch of one if you do need it. And we're going to get a little practice here on a bunch of stuff from chapter 5 to this point. So number 46. I'm given a rational uh, function here, g of x equals 2x plus 4 over x plus 3. And I need to be able to convert that to graphing form before I can do anything. So this is going to tie together a bunch of things that we've done so far. It's going to tie together chapter uh, or section 512 first. Remember the very first step, always, always the very first step is to write the denominator. So write it. The second step is always the same. Write the denominator again, but this time write it in the numerator. Then you've got to ask yourself the question, what do I got to do to that numerator to maintain equality up here? So what do I have to do to x plus 3 to make it equal to 2x plus 4? Well, the first thing to do, and hopefully the most obvious thing, is I have an x here, but I need to have a 2x. Well, the simplest way to turn an x into 2x is to multiply it by 2. Now I have to use parentheses there, so you do have to be careful. And when I do that, I'm going to have 2 times x, which is 2x. That's what I want. But I'm also going to have 2 times 3. And 2 times 3 equals 6. But I don't want 6. I want 4. So what do you got to do to 6 to get 4? You got to subtract 2. Now, reason, advantage, is now I can divide both of these. 2x plus 3 over x plus 3 and negative 2 over x plus 3. 
advantage. X plus three is over here, cancel each other out. So I end up with two plus negative two over X plus three. I should be able to graph this now because I have an upshift of two, up two, I have left three and I have flip. So let's see what it looks like. So up two, up two, one, two, HA. Left three, one, two, three, VA. And a flip. So instead of first and third, I'm going second. and four for my curve, for my hyperbola, okay? Then, uh, rewrite it, we did that. B, write at least three limit statements similar to ones in 44 that describe the graph of G of X. So here's my graph. I wanna write three limit statements. So let's, uh, we'll do four. Let's write the limit, okay, of G of X as x approaches, well, a simple one that we've been doing is infinity. So as x goes to infinity. And then let's do the limit of g of x as x approaches, what's our critical value here? Our critical x value is negative three. So we're approaching negative three, but we gotta approach it from a direction. Let's go from the right, okay? And then we're gonna have the limit of g of x as x approaches negative three from the left, and one we haven't touched yet, but we certainly can, is the limit of g of x as x approaches negative infinity. So now, as x goes to the left as far as possible, what's it going to equal? What I want you to do is get an answer for each of those. Use your fingers, trace the lines to whatever direction you're going and coming from, and determine what the y value is approaching for each of those limit statements. I'll see you in class tomorrow.